Hello everybody, my name is Tamir Massas, I'm from Israel. I lived four years as a monk at Wagesa in South Korea, and nowadays I'm married to my closest friend, Dalit, and father for three boys. And I want to start with express my gratitude. First, I want to thank you, Sunim, for wonderful teaching. I want to thank to this temple. Uh, for me, it's not the first time in a temple, but this temple has a special thing. It is a silence here, like we experience in the desert in Israel. And I want to thank to all the wonderful people that make this wonderful food really support the practice, not too heavy, not too light. And finally, to thank all of you as a Sangha, that it's not simple to practice in our style, but every hour you come and you do your job and you sit with a pain and maybe lots of thinking, and it's really unexpressible. Okay, I want to share with you uh, one wonderful teaching. Actually, I consider myself very lucky. I came at the age of 22 to Wagesa. And at that time, Zen Master Sung San was coming every morning and gave us like short Dharma talk and answering our question. And he had a wonderful teaching, many different wonderful teaching, but one thing that was very strong for me, it was put it all down. Put down your opinion, put down your condition, and put down your situation. I didn't understand it at the time, but I would love to share with you a free, a, a three events that happened in my life that make this teaching very close to me. So as I said, I came first time to a Kiolche, three months retreat, summer retreat in 98 to Agesa. They introduced the teaching to me. At that time was also one Dosunim was the head monk and you was the second head monk. So every day, wake up at 3.15 in the morning, do lots of sitting, chanting, bowing, day after day after day, like we do here. And in the first week, lots of pain in the knees, in the back, lots of thinking. When this day will finish and we go to sleep some... But after two, three weeks, the body is getting used to it. And the mind a little bit more calm. I thought already something is wonderful is happening now, become more quieter. Then after one month, some thoughts start to appear. Very strong thought. It's like they have their own life. Some attachment to thinking attached to that I infected in HIV. I know it's only a thought in the first moment, but these thoughts start to going on. I share this with the teacher, and he said, put it down. But after three days, it's become bigger and bigger and bigger. I wasn't sit at all. Just sit and think about it. After one week, I start in my mind to make the last errands before dying. And after two weeks, I couldn't stand it anymore. So my first kiolche, I broke. I went to the teacher and forced him. I forced the dumuns on him at the time to send me with the nun to make an HIV test. <laughs> then when I got the results after two days, and it was negative, I realized how strong thoughts can be. So this was the first event. The second event, I returned to Wagesa to become a monk. And before becoming a monk, you need to be hengja. It's the same, it's the same clothes, but in brown. Every day you wake up and you clean the temple, wash, do dishes, toilets, everything. So which means you put your nose down all the time. Yes, Sunim. Yes, Sunim. How can I help you, Sunim? And this is for one year. After one year, you get the permission and you can take the precepts and become a monk. At that time I start to be Hengja, we were six Western Hengja and one Korean Hengja. And this Henja, the Korean Henja, finished after six months. He, had to, he, could, he could go to like three weeks training and become a Sunim. And I had to stay for one year. So when he returned as a monk, he became our supervisor. 
and he really, really want to teach us humble mind. So he took all the six of us and put us on Sunday when almost 10,000 people come to the temple in both sides of the gate, face each other, three from one side and three from the other side, and say, whatever come and pass this gate, you bow to him. <laughs> You can imag imagine all the angels come up, but he's a sunim. We have to do it. So in the beginning, you could look at the faces. Everybody's red, but bow. Very difficult to bow, but we try. <laughs> then after some time, some women come to the temple. We bow. Some men come. We bow. Some children play around. We bow. Then maybe the dog smell the food. So he come, and right away, all the six, <laughs> we bow. So at that time, we start to laugh. It was very easy to put it down, not attach too much to his idea. Right away, a second after, the jujitsu him, the habit, appear from the first stop and start to shout on him, what are you all going to do? Leave him alone. <laughs> so this was the second event, to put it down. The third uh, event, was after three years when I was a monk, I start to doubt the practice. And my biggest demon start to appear. It's like you clean your fears, your anger, many things, and then something very big appear. Some loneliness start to appear. And I didn't know what to do. Even I was a monk, I had a very warm sangha. Everybody want to help me. So I don't feel this feeling. I know this feeling shape every decision, every thoughts, every action. So I knew I have to do something with that. So I took a plan and went to Myanmar, Burma, and I got a small kuti, which means a very small a house in the middle of the forest without electricity, only mosquito net and a small toilet. Twice a day, you beg for the food. You go with a bucket. It's a black round bucket. And you beg for the food. First night in the forest, many sounds. You believe and you imagine that they always come to take over you. <laughs> and the first moment you start with a target, you feel very strong. I want to conquer this loneliness. And I always, already was trained for three years, so I make a schedule and just follow it. But when evening time come, when the sun set, loneliness appear. And with me, it's in my belly. The belly is come to crunch. Like, so monks don't have so much things to, how to hide. They don't have food, no much money. They cannot... So the best way, go to sleep. I go to sleep, cannot even see the sunset, just run to bed and went to sleep. Wake up early morning, not so 100% in this target, almost 50 maybe, but I start to practice and my mind become calm and clear and go outside to beg for the food. So I see some people without talking, it's very large area. We then eat and relax. But just evening time arrive again and the thoughts start. Why did I leave this place? Why do I stay here? Tomorrow I leave. I pack the, the bag. I leave tomorrow. And I was lucky or, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, they had one bus a day. If you miss this bus, that's it. <laughs> it's kind of no way situation. You cannot escape it. So every evening I pack the bag, every morning I unpack the bag. I already understand, I have no way to run away. It's Ma in my mind. Ma so make it short, for 52 days it was like that. But on the morning 52 day, the 52 day, I realized something very interesting. I realized how I make my own suffer, and then I suffer. So then I wait for the evening to check this insight, if it's real, or just imagination again. Evening time come, the sun starts to set, loneliness starts to appear, and I realized something very interesting. My sense saw the sunset. My belly start to crunch. But then I start to say to myself, 
oh, you are a poor guy. Why you need to suffer so much? Why do you need it? Can you go and be with your friends? Why you have to push yourself all the time? Yeah. The moment I realize it, I stop it. I stop pretty, pity on myself. And the sensation disappear. The thoughts also relax. It was the first time I saw a complete sunset. The birds sing maddenly. Lots of sounds. How couldn't I hear that? I was completely lost in this loneliness. I stayed for 50 more days. And to be honest with all of you, still loneliness come to my life many times. But I'm not scared for it anymore. I can stay with it, let it arise, let it be with it, and then it disappear. So this is the last occasion. How to put it down. So I think what we are doing here, it's so important. Sometimes we don't connect what we are doing here and when we go outside. But nowadays when I live in a family and three boys, put it down, it's the best practice. Only serve them and then harmonize relationship up here. I want to thank you all for listening and for this wonderful practice. And Anthony will answer this question. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.